Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. I'm taking a few minutes off from building and I thought I would show you guys some exciting new kits that are, some are coming out right about now and some will be out very, very soon. And our friends over at Dragon USA were kind enough to send us out a bunch of samples of all these new kits. And I thought I would take a few minutes and show you what's new and exciting from Dragon. <laughs> Okay, the, uh, the first kit I want to show you, which is new from Dragon, and actually will be out probably within about a week or two in the United States. This is the uh, German SU-76i with cupola. And what this kit right here represents is a little variation on this kit. Now, this kit came out in uh, last year, the middle of last year. And what they represent are, during the, about the Battle of Stalingrad, the Germans had lost a couple of hundred Sturmgeschutz Panzer III's. And the Russians had captured them, taken them back to their own factories. They had lopped off the entire top of either the Panzer III or the uh, Stormgeschutz and made it onto this superstructure. It was a little bit taller, it's completely enclosed, as well as they changed the gun to a ZIS-5 76.2 millimeter right, gun and also put some external fuel tanks on it, did a few other modifications. So the new kit that is coming out from Dragon, what this represents is that same vehicle that was captured by the Russians, converted, brought back. This one was then captured again by the Germans. What they probably did is taken it back to a rear maintenance facility and installed a German cupola on top, which gave the, uh, the commander able to have nice vision but still protect himself inside. They kept with the, uh, the same Russian gun, same external fuel tanks. They did add the, the uh, winter kit and tracks onto it. And what those will do is those help out a lot with ground pressure because it, it basically adds about f almost 50% more track onto the, the vehicle so it won't bog down as much in snow and mud, things like that. In fact, if you watched my video not too long ago, this is actually a real piece of the winter ketten. And it's got this extra piece stuck onto the side. If you can imagine, if he was just like this, this would be a piece of track off of a Stormgeschutz or a Panzer III. But they added this extension on here, like I was showing you. So really adds a lot onto it so it doesn't sink in. One thing that I'm very excited about with this kit are the possibilities on paint jobs. About a year and a half ago, I did a video on doing a winter tiger and we used the hairspray technique and chipped up the, uh, the whitewash paint that they would have put on this. So I'd like to do a similar process with this vehicle. We can do the winter whitewash all over it, chip it up, plus also having the winter ketten on the side. We can use some of our snow effect and put some of that on there, plus some of the other we weathering techniques that we've been using over the last year. I think we can really do a really good job on this vehicle, so I'm very excited about getting started on this one and doing a really cool looking paint job on it. I also thought I'd just give you guys a quick look at the uh, the back of the box. Uh, it has the uh, Winter Ketten uh, tracks in it, the Magic tracks, the individual ones, so those will build up really nicely. Plus it has quite a bit of photo etch inside of it for, for doing some of the detail parts. Well, this is another kit that uh, myself and quite a few of my customers have been excited about. This is the SDKFC 252. Uh, this was a munition schlepper that the Germans had in World War II. And this one went along with all of the Stormgeschütz. So if you're looking to build a uh, diorama, this is, with the Stormgeschütz in it, especially the early ones, this wouldn't be a great addition to it. What would happen on this is this is a modified 250 half track where they've cut the back off and armored up the top. Plus it's also towing a... Uh, a trailer behind it full of uh, ammunition for the Stormgeschütz. So you'd see the Stormgeschütz, then you'd see some of these towing up the ammunition form, plus also Dragon in the past has made a 253. Now the 253 was the, like the command half track that they would use for, uh, had all the radios on it and it would use for communications on it. So this is a great kit that uh, we've been waiting quite a while for and it's uh, just great to see it come out. On the back, 
you, you'll notice that it has photo etch for all of the, uh, the shell casings. Plus you can see how the armor cap that I was talking about completely covers in on that. And they store more ammunition inside of there as well. It has the magic tracks, uh, which I've, I've built uh, these magic tracks on another kit in the past. And they go together real well and are workable once, uh, once you get them all built up. So it's, uh, like I said, it's a very exciting kit to get a hold of. Uh, especially if you are going to do some type of diorama, it would look really good with this couple of storm shuts sitting there and this vehicle and then a crew unloading all the ammunition out on it so something to look forward to here's a, another great kit uh, this is the Israeli M3 half track uh, for the six day war and this is based on Dragon's M3, the American World War II version that they came out a while ago. The Israelis ended up with quite a few of these after World War II. Uh, this kit is going to be great for a couple reasons. A, uh, Dragon is making all kinds of stuff to go along with the, uh, the Six Day War series. In fact, in about a month from now, they're coming out with another one with anti-tank missiles mounted atop with a armored cab on top. Really cool looking vehicle. This vehicle, like I said, is based on the other one. But they do give you quite a few DS accessories to really load up the entire vehicle. Uh, in fact, if you guys remember the M51 I produced, this would be a great vehicle to go up alongside of it, especially with all the tarps and bags, things like that. Uh, I built, like I said, I've built this kit once before. In fact, you may have even seen it in some of my other videos. It's a, it's a goes together really well. I do plan on building this one as well. This is going to be a little bit further down the road, but yeah, it's a great kit, and excited about doing this. And all of the uh, Israeli war stuff will be great. Here we go. Here's a uh, another kit from their exciting new line. Uh, this is a based on a Hetzer chassis, and what's unique about this vehicle right here is. They had taken Hetzers, converted most of the front ends on them right here, because you can see there's no gun barrel that sticks out. They cut open the top on it, and this was the Germans kind of experimenting with things to see how things would work. Op left an open top vehicle, and then put the short barrel 7.5 millimeter, excuse me, 7.5 centimeter uh, stummel gun on top of it, which they were putting on quite a few of their vehicles late war if they didn't have some of the longer barrel guns. Now, this kit is new tooling. Uh, part of it might be uh, a little bit of the older tooling, but but still very nice. The gun itself, all new tracks with length and length tracks inside of it. Very cool. And this is to go along with the series. Now, these two kits have come out, I'd say probably within the last two months. Uh, this is the first one to come out. And this was, once again, a Hetzer chassis where they've removed the front and didn't have a gun in involved with it or a long barrel 75 millimeter gun and they installed inside of it a two centimeter flak 38 so once again open um, top and and had a, like an anti-aircraft gun inside and also the other one that came out about the same time this is another one similar to the very first one the Hetzer chassis again all new upper uh, moldings and lower body has the individual and length and length tracks but this one had the uh, the Sig 33 gun in it, which was a 150 millimeter uh, like howitzer type gun, open top again. So very very cool type of stuff, and it's glad to see. Never have I seen any of these other vehicles being made by any model company. So it's great to see some of this really cool stuff coming out from Dragon. Here is a uh, another new Japanese kit uh, that Dragon is offering up to us. This is a Imperial Japanese Army Type 4 light tank, uh, the Key New. Quick little history on this vehicle. Uh, this is the uh, Type 97 Chiha turret that the Japanese later retrofitted onto the hulls of some of their older Type 95 Hago light tanks. The Japanese built about 100 of these in 1944, and it's very similar to some of the other uh, light tanks that Dragon has produced in the past. Uh, they've changed a few little parts here and there on it, but it's, it's great to see some Japanese armor coming out because it's, it's a subject that is just widely just glossed over by most model companies. And, you know, fine molds made a few in the past, but nothing like this. I've seen some of these other kits built up, and they look absolutely wonderful. You get the DS tracks inside of this, and lots and lots of detail on it. This will be another kit that, actually, believe it or not, I'm kind of excited a little bit more about because it's something different camouflage-wise, you know, colors and things. And just been wanting to do something a little bit different, and doing a Japanese tank like this uh, sounds kind of interesting. So look to see the uh, for the build video pretty soon on this one as well. 
The uh, last vehicle we're going to take a look at is the T95 Super Heavy Tank. This vehicle was developed in 1944 and originally purpose was to take on the German Siegfried line. They thought having this monster 105 millimeter gun mounted in an armor encasement that was in some places 12 inches thick that would be great for knocking out fortifications. By the time the vehicle though was actually about ready to be trials, we had already had passed the Siegfried line in World War II. There was also some talk that they were going to use it in the war with the Japanese, but uh, the two atomic bombs that were dropped basically rendered it, it was useless. And because of the size and the amount of money that was cost, it was basically just scrapped. We'll take a quick look at the back here. As you can see, it has DS track inside of it and actually has four sets of track in it. And that's because the T95 had an extra set of bogey wheels on either side of the vehicle that could be detached and towed from behind. And this way, it could make the vehicle a lot narrower if it had to cross a narrow bridge, things like that, and just tow the other pieces behind it. So you guys can see I've got uh, quite a bit of modeling uh, ahead of me. Lot, quite a nice kits. I want to thank you guys as always for watching. I'd also like to thank Dragon USA for getting out these copies to us so I can show you and share with you all the exciting new kits coming out from Dragon. Uh, and so I've got a lot of work ahead of me, so I'm going to get started on building. And please stay tuned because we have more model videos coming.